how do we how do we become unified and use research and research creation to uh, call attention to what is a very large territory, but we're actually a very small people. Internationally, we're only about maybe 160, 170,000 Inuit in the world. So, you know, that's a, that's a medium-sized town in Canada. <laughs> so we really need to work together, I think, in order to address some of the issues that are facing the Arctic today. So I, I grew up in Happy Valley Goose Bay, which is in on the sort of northern interior coast of Labrador, and went to NASCAD. I wanted to be an artist when I when I grew up, and got into a car accident, and uh, was unable to paint. That was I was in painting and drawing. I'd done some jewelry and other things at NASCAD, but I I'm left-handed, and I got into a car accident where I was injured on my left arm and shoulder and I lost the use of my arm for, uh, it was about 11 months of just physiotherapy every day before I got, before I was even well enough to kind of function in my daily life, let alone pick up a paintbrush and paint again. And so I thought, you know, well, let me just Google Inuit art history because at the university that I'd done my undergrad, they didn't have any indigenous studies at all. You know, it's the early 2000s. So I thought, let me just see if it's taught somewhere in the country. And I searched for Inuit art history and a bunch of theses and a couple of courses came up at Carleton University. So I applied for an art history program there and uh, got out and thought I would just do a little project and then realized that there was this whole vast world of Inuit art that, and that there were no Inuit in it, <laughs> you know, not really. The handful of uh, really important scholars who had written articles and essays, and but you know, no books, uh, very few exhibitions that have been curated by Inuit over the previous, you know, 50 or 60 years. I just became really interested in what was possible. First, I was working just on my community, uh, Nanatsiavut, and then um, that kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger until, <laughs> until we ended up here, basically. So that's how I became interested in art history uh, and how I got involved. You know, it's my culture and I, I, I've never gone back to painting, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> but I am doing a lot of beadwork and things. <laughs> so the kind of mandate that I set out for myself was to um, take my existing knowledge base and research on Canadian Inuit and other Northern and Indigenous peoples and expand that to the circumpolar world. So uh, not just the sort of circumpolar Inuit family, but also looking at what's happening with uh, Sami peoples and others in around the Arctic Circle. And we're right now working on a project that stems from an earlier uh, collaborative exchange that we had with Indigenous curators from Australia and New Zealand that was sponsored by the Canada Council and Australia and New Zealand's Arts Councils as well. For that exchange that took place over a period of three years, uh, a group of Canadians and um, Maori curators traveled to Australia and then we all went to New Zealand and then they all came to Canada. Um, and we traveled through Winnipeg, Vancouver, Whistler. It was really incredible because we got to, we came to understand how much we have in common and how much we can learn from each other by working together. And so we are now undertaking this brand new project that's going to be a massive public art, collaborative, multi-year project that brings together indigenous peoples from, from the Pacific, from uh, Canada, from the circumpolar world all together. The best knowledge is generated uh, between people and not uh, individually. I think that there's so much that we can learn from each other when we share and exchange ideas. Like one of the things that we're doing with The Space Between Us, which is the project that I was just talking about, is um, we are doing not, not comparative Indigenous knowledges, but we're looking at our, the philosophies that reside in, you know, like Inuit Kanyumiant Kangit and other, uh, you know, like um, Indigenous research methodologies, Indigenous ethics, and thinking through how these different philosophies are um, made real in the world today in different, in different parts of the world by different Indigenous peoples, and understanding then what we can learn from each other. So not to, not to flatten our knowledges together, but to really dig in and see what is at the core and underscores all of these things and where we can find um, new ways to draw on that knowledge because uh, we feel that Indigenous knowledge is incredibly important to what's happened in the world today. There, there's the care component of it, which I think can often get left out of research. <laughs> and, uh, but for me, it's like every, every relationship that I've built, I, I sort of nurture it and then I have to be really protective of that because, you know, there's still a lot of knowledge extraction like that, you know, academia is 
is fundamentally underscored by its colonial past. And so uh, we need to be always conscious of, of not just taking, but making sure that we're also giving back and that we, that, that, that is not a one-time exchange, but that it's a, it's a loop, you know, that it's a, a continuous circle of uh, respect and giving in that the process of, you know, academic research. There's kind of, there's a collaboration that is lateral and then there's a collaboration that is um, communal and one that is bringing people up at the same time. And so collaborating as a form of mentorship versus collaborating as a form of uh, knowledge exchange with peers. What, one of the things that's really central, of course, my partnership grant is a training and mentoring grant, and it's all about supporting young Inuit and Inuvialuit in Canada to take up leadership positions all across the arts because we have huge, huge numbers of Inuit artists. Our works are really well represented in collections, and yet very, very few Inuit get to be in, in uh, a gentle positions over what happens with our arts and how it is disseminated and how knowledge is created around it. And so the research side, the administrative side, uh, collections management, the writing, all of that has largely been done by non-Inuit. And, and it's not that that is not um, important contributions, but that there is this huge gap in uh, perspective and ways of looking and seeing knowledge about families and practices and uh, things that aren't shared with the outside world. And so to really foreground uh, an Inuit way of looking at Inuit art or a way of thinking about it or thinking through it, we really need Inuit in leadership positions. The big part of the grant is that working with so many of my colleagues and people at institutions across the country who hold our culture in trust, we are able to work with them to make sure that Inuit are in positions where they are getting really important skills and knowledge and building their confidence to become leaders in these positions because very often uh, it's, it's not that we don't have this uh, capacity, it's that people can't envision themselves in those places because we haven't seen it historically. Like uh, uh, one of my um, co-leaders on the grant, Alethea Arnakwak Barrel, when she met me, she was like, it just never occurred to me that an, an it could be a curator because I'd never, I've just never seen that before. And so, you know, just like, that like sort of calling it into being by making it, uh, by doing it ourselves, I think is a really critical part of that. And then the mentorship side of it is, uh, I think the most important, Inuit learn by observation. And so being able to work alongside someone instead of uh, just approaching it academically, I think has been really the key to our success of the project so far. The best collaboration comes from building trusting relationships and being able to uh, really nurture and foster professional relationships, but also friendships. You know, you need to want to be working with someone for a long period of time. And I think that the more that you can um, build those relationships, the, the better the research outcomes are. So I, I consider it a bit of a sacred responsibility to the people that I work with that I continue to honor what they've shared with me, especially if we're talking about elders and artists, language keepers, you know, they're the subject of my work, but they are also the core of that work. And so I, I feel a great responsibility to steward their stories, to be responsible to them going forward. And that, that can play out in kind of big ways or just simple, smaller ways, like um, dropping everything to write a reference letter for someone <laughs> or being on call to review a grant application or, um, you know, talking to someone's high school student about university programs, like kind of whatever anybody needs, I, I'm there for them because that reciprocity is so important to the work that I do. So collaborators are also people that I am responsible to is how I think about it. You know, I've, I've seen divisions between the four regions, regions of Inuit Nunanga and how we have different dialects and um, different practices, but that we really are one people, you know, and that we have a lot to thank for our national Inuit organizations for making that so and bringing us together. We also have social media to thank for that because we're so isolated in our communities that now I, I know so many more Inuit now. And uh, what I really see is that we are actually one family from Siberia all the way to Greenland. And so we are actually um, prevented in doing work together, traveling to see each other, but participating in research together by national borders, by nation states that uh, don't reflect what our actual homelands are, you know, and, and what can we do together to address some of the, the sort of global issues that we all face in our own nations on our own. Things like uh, subsistence hunting or mining extraction in the Arctic and concerns that we have for Arctic animals that migrate over the border every day, you know, and so how do we, how do we become unified 
and use research and research creation to uh, call attention to what is a very large territory, but we're actually a very small people. Internationally, we're only about maybe 160, 170,000 Inuit in the world. So, you know, that's a, that's a medium-sized town in Canada. <laughs> so we really need to work together, I think, in order to address some of the issues that are facing the Arctic today.